didn't look. She, the thing she saw was how I looked, my appearance. So when someone has an opportunity to hear me speak, like the job I had for six years when I interviewed for them, I was back east at the time and I spoke to the woman on the phone and I had a couple of phone interviews and she said she could hear me smiling through the phone. She liked my voice, I was gonna be doing telephone sales. And when I came in to meet her, she had no problem with me. And she had me meet some uh, male managers and they went to shake my hand and I told them I don't shake hands for religious reasons and I laughed and smiled and told them it doesn't mean I'm not friendly. And they smiled and it was fine. They wanted to shut the door for their interview. I asked them to keep the door open because it was just two of us. No problem. And I got the job. And I was there six years. I moved up from a sales position to a sales management position and from a sales management position to a director's position over three departments. So it's not a matter of being a covered Muslim. It's a matter of getting an opportunity to see past the cover. And there's not, you can't guarantee that everybody's going to be fair or just in that. And that's where the problem comes in in finding a job in America today. In California, when 9-11 happened, I happened to be living in Pennsylvania. It was worse for me during the Kuwaiti War when I was living in California. I had people run me off the road. Um, men would take their their shirts and roll them up over their head and laugh and say ugly things. Um, it was bad. The women in the community, in the Islamic community, um, couldn't go out at night by themselves. Um, people were abusive. But during 9-11, I happened to be in Pennsylvania at that time working in a big corporation, and the people were very kind with me. They, they knew me from working with me. They said, do you want us to take you home? Are you sure you're going to be safe? They were really, really nice. So it was completely different seeing how, I was, how it was handled in the Kuwaiti war and how it was handled in 9-11. By 9-11, there were a lot more Muslims in a lot, in a lot of different areas. And I think people start, you know, now they see us and they're like, oh, OK. Back when I first started wearing my scarf 20 years ago, 24 years ago, I mean, it was uh, mothers bringing their children away from me in a grocery store thinking, I don't know, I have guns with me or something. I don't know what they were thinking. And I would say hi, and I would speak in English, and they'd be shocked. Um, and I'm like, I'm American. I just dress like this because of my religion. Don't be scared. And I would try to talk with the kids or the parents. Some people were understanding. Some people weren't. But... Um, it was very different when I first started wearing my scarf because there weren't large Muslim communities. Mm -hmm. Today, it's very different. You find Islamic stores, you find markets, you find people, you find communities where, you know, it's so common that people don't look twice. They're, you know, it's like, okay, whatever. So yeah. it's, it's a very different world today than it was 20, 24 years ago. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem Bismillahir rahmanir rahim I started learning about Islam from an Arab speaking gentleman um, who was translating from in, from Arabic material into English material. So they had very few people in California when I embraced Islam in our community, and then the community started to grow. So as it grew, um, and we they reached out to other, um, I guess, chapters of the Association of Islamic Charitable Projects, AICP, the organization where I learned from, they sent me to, to someone who spoke English and had materials in English, and they retaught me about the Tawheed and the Fiqh. And then um, I took that material and I started teaching. And then over the years, I've helped edit um, the summary of the obligatory knowledge in English. I've worked on several documents for our association on the editorial staff. So I've learned from many people, um, especially Sheikh Samir al-Qadi, who was um, living in Pennsylvania at the time that I was there. So for five straight years, we got Islamic teaching. I've been teaching Islam since 1988 to non-Arab speakers, and I teach them the Tawheed and the Fiqh. So I teach them the basic belief and the rules of the religion. And I've been doing this, like I said, since 1988. I've had large classes, small classes, one-on-one. -on -one. I've done it on the phone. Um, today, I teach two classes. I take one class and teach two classes. So I have um, some college girls that I'm teaching now. They were um, raised in an Arab home, but not a Muslim Arab home. So they never learned their religion until um, their 20s. Assalamu alaikum, my name is Hafsa and I'm living in California. 
I'm planning on getting a bachelor's degree in biochemistry and molecular biology by 2013, and I plan to go on med school after that, inshallah. I met Kokub um, when she started teaching me Islamic lessons, and she's a very friendly, mashallah. She's a great woman, mashallah. She's very happy, always smiling. Yeah. I think it's pretty spectacular that Kokub, as a Muslim convert, is teaching me a person who's born Muslim Islam. It's a real accomplishment for her, I think, mashallah. And inshallah, from the knowledge I learn, I'll teach other people someday as well. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Layla Divini. Um, I was born and raised in California. And currently I'm teaching, but I'm going to be going to graduate school next year. I first met Kaukab because we were interested in taking lessons about Islam. And um, she became our Islam teacher. Well, being born and raised here and spending a lot of time, um, obviously, here in California as a Muslim, I think a lot of people have many questions about Islam, especially post 9-11. They want to know a lot of information. I think a lot of people are apprehensive and it takes time for them to get used to the idea of Muslims being part of American society. Um, I think that American society is composed of not just one religion but many religions and People are more interested in, in learning more rather than um, fearful, I think, for the most part. People are concerned or they have a friend or somebody from school and they're like, can I bring them to one of your lessons? Can we talk about this? Can you answer their questions? So it's, um, we try to do it as informally as possible to make people feel comfortable about talking about things they don't know about. So um, teaching the religion is a rewardable deed. So anytime you have the opportunity to do it, it's good. Kaukab has been a great teacher and her knowledge base is, is quite extraordinary. She has a lot of knowledge and if she can't answer a question, she always asks somebody else um, for us. I also teach a, a, married, a young married couple. The, um, the girl has been Muslim for quite some time and her, um, her husband embraced Islam recently. So I've been teaching the two of them together. So she's reviewing and he's learning and it's a really nice experience. I, I enjoy teaching them. So I teach two classes. I teach them at the Islamic Center in Anaheim, California. And I've also taught lessons in my home. I've taught lessons in other people's homes. So it's been a long period of teaching. Sometimes I have more classes than other times. I've known Kaukab since uh, I was seven years old. Um, my friends, my uncle, my family, they were all her friends also. She, uh, she came um, in we, to join us and uh, we took lots of uh, care and support of our Muslim community. Um, I've always went to her house. Uh, you know, helped her with her kids. Before that, I she taught me. MashaAllah, Bismillah alayha kawkab. She uh, converted to Islam with, you know, all her will. She uh, taught, she learned, and she always wanted to learn more and more, and never gave up. Kawkab is a very special person. She's very special to me. S since I've known her since I was seven years old, and all these years, I mean, she's seen me, uh, grow, get married, uh, have kids, and until now we've been, you know, friends and in contact. حب كوكب لأولادها متجذر بعمق في قلبها إن تربية ولدين اعتمادا على نفسها هو تحد حقيقي وكان إيمانها السر في نجاحها. The hardest years were the teenage years, you know, they're, you know, it's the time when they defy their parents and things like that. Um, I want to do this. I don't understand why I can't go here, why I can't stay out late, why I can't have this friend. <laughs> so I think, you know, that was hard for me. I had to teach them how to choose the right friends. Um, today, I don't worry about that. My kids know that if they lose my trust, they have to earn it back. And if I don't like one of their friends, like there's things I see in them, I talk to them. I tell them, you know, I saw some things I don't like. And if they can explain to me why what I saw was different from what I perceived, then I'm open to that. But there are some friends I've had to say, um, I don't want you to be friends with that person. This is not a good person to have in your life. You're going to go down the wrong path. So um, I think that respect that we ingrained in our kids, they, you know, 
they knew when to push and when not to push. So um, the friend thing was a little bit hard, picking the right friends, especially going into high school. You know, it's a tough time in kids' lives, and they start to do things that you don't want them to do. So we just, you know, stayed on top of them and tried to, you know, keep guiding them and giving them options other than the things that kids who were going the wrong way chose. So, yeah, teenage years because they're rebellious. <laughs> so, Habibi, how was your first day? Alhamdulillah, my first day was great. How was your day today? It was busy. Did you like your new job? Yeah, it was good. It's not difficult to operate in society while being Muslim because being on the path of Islam is just a way to operate through your life and it's a path that you take just like life so it's very easy to get by in America as long as you do what you have to do and stay away from the bad things. Yeah, I have many non-Muslim friends. I went to a high school, a public high school in America and I made a lot of friends. I'm very personable. People seem to like me. Some of my friends were accepting like they understood and they they don't stop me from the things that I need to do. Most of my friends, the ones that I still talk to, actually remind me to pray sometimes and they know that I don't eat non-halal meat and it's very easy to hang out with them like they've become accustomed to it. But I mean, some people, there's always the hard people who don't understand and are afraid of what they don't know and don't get, so they just didn't stay in my life because I had no need for them. It wasn't worth it have somebody bring you down and then you can move forward in life. Just being a good Muslim has helped extremely while I'm down and, and not feeling as if I have a way out of things, just rem reminding myself to pray and do the good deeds and um, it, it really helps you, it really gives you motivation in life to get out there and fix yourself and to better yourself in many ways. Most people don't know I'm Muslim when they meet me because I'm so like a normal guy. So um, like later on they'll find out like I'll say something or I don't eat this or I don't do that. And they'll be like, what do you mean? And I'll be like, oh, I'm Muslim. And they'll be like, no, like no one believes me. So, but, um, and, and they accept it like immediately because it's such a non-issue because I act like them so much that it doesn't like register. Like I don't come wearing a turban or like doing like siwak all the time in front of them. So they're not like surprised. Like they're just a regular guy. Living in America, there's a lot of things to do. You can have a lot of fun. There's, there's so many things you can do. So um, we always end up going to the movies or going to hang out with friends. We have dinner, this, that. Hang out with Muslims, non-Muslims, and it's, it's not a big deal. Because as long as you don't go to a situation where, like, inherently there's haram in it, then you're good. You keep your heart pure, and you keep the situation you're in good, and you're fine. But when someone's not a Muslim, you always feel like there's that, that emptiness. And so, like... When they, when they see it in us, they're like, oh, like even other Muslims, because w me and my friends, like we follow more than most people. So they see us and they say like, like you guys are so good together, you're good friends, you do this, you do that, you always advise each other. So they, they want to be like us and it's cool. It's, it's a really nice environment to be in. And it's, it's nice to be like the person you are all the time. The way I was raised is the way I'd like to raise my children. So um, I think that, you know, as long as I find a woman who's as good as my mom or better and I turn out like my parents, then inshallah I'll raise my kids just fine. Salamun hiya hatta matla'i al-fajr Sadaqallahu al-Azim Sayyidina Ali said like that people are asleep, like most people are asleep when they wake up, like when they, when they die, that's when they wake up. So I think like if you can live your life as if you're awake, that's the best thing you can do in Islam is what provides that. If you really follow the religion, then you can be awake all the time. I think people are becoming, more people are becoming Muslim in America because they're hearing the truth about Islam. They're not hearing, you know, they're willing to listen beyond what the media is saying, beyond the negative things that are being said, trying to find out what is it about, what, what made you become Muslim, why are you, why did you do this thing? Because they used to think it's something from the East, it's something from the, those people. And now when you see, you know, blonde hair, blue eyed people becoming Muslim, you see, you know, like your neighbors are Muslim, you see so many Muslim people, you're like, what is that? And I think that's why I think it's the, the era of getting knowledge, of being willing to talk with people instead of fearing them. I'm very happy to be Muslim. I'm very happy to be in America as a Muslim. I don't feel um, uncomfortable with being Muslim. There are things that are difficult, like finding work, especially now. Um, it is difficult for a Muslim to find work today. Um, 
but I don't regret ever becoming Muslim. I don't regret raising my children Muslim or being a practicing Muslim walking in the community. It doesn't, it's a, it's a good thing. It's not an unhappy thing at all. Allahu